I hope I don't disillusion any of you, but I'm really finding that sometimes the Holy Spirit can be a pain. Listen to the first reading, and I was thinking about a homily I thought of during the week, explaining the vineyard and talking about how that applied to us. And when I listened to the words of the second reading, I thought, no, that's some good stuff right there. And I should be talking about that tonight. When we came to the gospel and we were back to vineyards, I went, okay, maybe that's the way that I'm supposed to go. And I knew that it's the kind of the spirit that's inspiring me in whatever way. But I knew that it stopped being the spirit. And what I heard was, oh, go ahead and preach on both. Give two homilies. No, that wasn't, that wasn't of God. I know that. <laughs> This, um, this group of servers over here, they're a little bit unique compared to some of the servers that, that I have had recently. Because before Mass in the sacristy, they were talking with one another. They were interacting. And not that the other servers haven't done that, but in the sacristy, we've got a big, huge TV monitor that shows us the views of six of the, the cameras from around the, the parking lot. Just so, you know, if something happens, if something goes wrong, we can be aware of it and we can react. And a lot of times, the servers will just be fascinated by that. It's a, it's a screen, it's a TV, and it's on. So we'll watch that. But don't we all? Found a uh, chart online. Interesting. It's called Daily Distribution of Screen Minutes Across Countries. Stop and think about it. How much time do we today spend focusing our attention on a glowing screen of one form or another? Between TVs, computers, Phones, tablets, whatever. This gave the breakdown. In the US, and I hope we're not disappointed by this, we're only sixth in the world. Screen minutes across countries each day. In the U.S., we as a people are tied with Great Britain for the amount of time of TV each day. 147 minutes on the average. Hundred and three minutes on a computer, staring at that screen. One hundred and fifty one minutes staring at our smartphones. Two and a half hours. And then forty three minutes 
laptop. But you're looking total at an average of seven hours a day that we as Americans are there in front of a glowing screen What are we taking in in that time? How much of what is coming out from that worth our absorbing, worth our very, very valuable time? How much of that seven hours a day are we just using to escape or using to our detriment? And folks, this is where this particular harangue has to stop. Because as I was thinking about all of that, finally a voice inside of my head went off and said, wait a minute. You're just as guilty, if not more so, how much are you above the national average? smartphone? No, I don't. My thumbs are fairly well rested. Computer. The days when the power goes out or the internet goes down at work. I don't sometimes know what to do, how to do my work. And TV? Well, let's just ignore that and move on as best we can. So I realized I, I don't have room to talk. So I just need the same advice, encouragement that we all do that comes to us from St. Paul today. And I don't know if you heard those words, but they are a good reminder to all of us. Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just or pure, whatever is lovely or gracious, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. So I go back and I look at not just neutral stuff on TV, but the fact that there is so much garbage. And we call it a guilty pleasure. The fact that with chat rooms and tweets and whatever else. There is so much that's being used today for good, but there's so much other stuff where people just go out of their way to be mean, to be small, to be isolated. How much of that do we do? How often do we check ourselves and say, what am I letting into my head, to my heart? How 
Is it having an effect on me? When I see so many people arguing on TV and not listening to one another, when I see those who are so desperate to have the sound bite, or to be convincing through the ad, Am I being aware of what's coming in? Am I being aware of how it might be affecting me? Am I choosing? The things that will be uplifting, educational, inspiring, Or do I just go for the stuff that's going to reaffirm what I already think? The th stuff that's going to tell me that this says I'm right and anybody who doesn't agree with me is wrong. Keep your minds on whatever is true or pure right or holy, inviting or proper. Don't ever stop thinking about what is truly worthwhile and worthy of praise. Paul's advice 2,000 years ago. It's a good reminder us today. We've got to be very careful about what kind of garbage we allow into the temple. <laughs>